Welcome to the second annual edition of the Get Aloud and Get Proud, the D6 Sports Network Podcast. Alright, thank you. Yeah, man. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and whoever may be out there listening. Mayor of Johnstown, LeBron James. We're not really sure who follows us, but we're going to just talk about what we want to talk about. So, without further ado, let me introduce my partners. I'm Dan DeFrancis, and we have our master genius over here, Bradley Barbin, and we have James the Jimmer Hammond. Uh, so, folks, today. Thanks, Dan. Great to be with you here this <laughs> evening. <laughs> Great to be with you, too, Bradley. Anyways, guys, what we wanted to do first, give a quick shout out to our sponsors. First of all, of course, we have the Haven Lounge located, not liquidated, located on Langhorne Avenue. And we also have Clark's Corner Store located on Monocker Boulevard across from the Westmont Middle School. We'd also say, like to say a quick word to our uh, beverage of choice here, Lemonade, <laughs> powers the D6 Sports Network. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... We wanted to get off, you know, we have a couple of really good topics we want to get involved in here today. And we're going to start, obviously, with what's hot right now. Baseball, the baseball diamond, playoffs are starting, you know, you can't really ask for much else. Then also, we're going to talk about a lot of where PA football is currently, where it's been, and also where it is headed. What's going on? Why are we lagging behind others? But in some ways, we could be better than other states, too. We're not really sure. We're going to get into that. And then finally, another hot topic is the bust of professional sports in Johnstown, both past and present, and probably future. So, without further ado, Jim, do you want to lead us off here in the high school baseball realm? No problem, Dan. So I think the most interesting story going on right now is uh, the court coach, Digger File, <laughs> was recently selected to perform on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, this puts McCourt in a tough position going into playoffs with no skipper. Uh, Jim, what are your thoughts there? Uh, no comment on the dance, but uh, I will comment on the baseball. <laughs> uh, we are in the middle of the first round. They were happening yesterday and today. Uh, we're looking to go into the quarterfinal round for single A and double A on Friday. So, of course, you know, you got to talk about who's, who's going to be around, who's going to be playing at uh, the Curve Stadium next week. Uh, yet to play a game, the top three seeds in uh, single A. you got Bishop McCourt, Bishop Guilfoyle, and Claysburg. Uh, McCourt, you know, obviously had a great year. Uh, only losses this year to Triple A Somerset. Bishop Guilfoyle led by uh, one of the best pitchers in the area, if not the best, Jexton Pugh. And of course, Claysburg, who always has a great program, great Legion program at that, too. So, you know, you expect to see those two, two of those three teams there, but there's always some dark horses, so you got to watch out for that. Double uh, A, you're looking at Phillipsburg, Mount Union, and Marion Center to be the top seeds. Uh, that, that one's a little bit uh, unpredictable. You know, a lot of turnover in that. Usually you see Bald Eagle there in the end. Yeah, they're always real good. Always there, but they were actually they were actually eliminated by Blairsville yesterday. So, you know, maybe some new faces in that. In that it went regard. into nine innings, didn't it? It went to nine innings. Blairsville beat them one nothing. So. Wow, that's pretty intense. I know, I know whenever I was a senior playing from a court, we actually uh, got mercy ruled, 10-run mercy ruled by Bald Eagle in our playoffs. But yeah, they're just one of those programs. They always have just good players, well yeah. coached. Always in in the end, mm -hmm. uh, and of course you got to talk about the big boys. Uh, AAA only three teams have entered, yeah. so you're gonna see a, a play in a play into the championship, if you will. Forest Hills will be uh, traveling over to Holidaysburg. Uh, I know uh, we've seen both teams this year on the D6 yeah. Sports Network. Uh, Forest Hills led by uh, Jared Shope and Justin Godola, two two top notch Spoilers. players. Yeah, they are. And uh, Holidaysburg, I think we were there when the kid threw a no hitter. Yeah, perfect, no, perfect, threw a perfect, perfect game. game. So well, they did like I think it was went to five or six. They when they played Guilfoyle. And yeah, you know, that's a good win beating yeah, Guilfoyle and huge. Pew and all that. So you know that should be an interesting matchup. And of course, yeah. the winner will take on Somerset, who we've touched on before. Yeah, is just really good at baseball. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the they big are game. really good at baseball. Right. What, what what do you have to say about Somerset? What, They're really good at baseball. That's all. That's all I got. Jim. Yeah. Hey, wait. Well, let's talk about real quick the uh, that that two three matchup with Holidaysburg and Forest Hills. Jim, like you were saying, you know, we've got to see both of them play. And, uh, you know, I wanted to give my real quick critique on what I think would be the outcome and whatnot. Obviously, it depends a lot on pitching and who's going to be in there. Uh, but we, we, we saw 
Holidaysburg, you know, put on a real dominating performance against Bishop Guilfoyle up at the Curve Classic in Altoona. So, you know, my kind of, you know, my kind of um, outlook on them might be more favorable than Forest Hills. Or we saw Forest Hills, it was more of like an overcast day. It was uh, up at Central Cambria. You know, Central Cambria is not exactly the uh, Altoona Curve stadium here. So uh, I think all those things combined to, to make me pick Holidaysburg over Forest Tells in this one. But obviously, though, if you have Gadula pitching, you know, he, th- he threw a heck of a game against, against uh, CC when we saw them. And then kids with, like, Jared Shope, like a competitor there. So uh, I definitely think it could be anybody's game. But I, I, I think Holidaysburg pulls that one out and then faces Somerset. And uh, that would be quite the game. Holidaysburg is actually a 2C, but also defeated Somerset earlier in the season. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're going to see a good game on, uh, I think it would be Thursday night, and the D6 Sports Network will be there for all four district championships. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, you got to round out with the big boys, uh, Quad A. you got State College, Central Mountain. They're in the 4-5 matchup. Uh, the winner will take on Mifflin County. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> we have not seen any of the teams, but from what well, I we saw, Altoona. Yeah, we've seen Altoona, but from what I gather, all four or all five Quad A teams have good records. You know, they play good baseball, so mm-hmm. it's going to be that's going to be a good race to see how that ends up. And uh, obviously, looking past District Six, which would you know that's two weeks away, but these teams, you know, Single A and Double A send two teams to the state playoffs. Triple A and Quad only send one, so yeah, yeah. it'd be nice to see uh, local teams make maybe uh, make it back to states. I know Somerset did a few years ago, mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. I know the the Whippy Old, they always have some pretty tough teams, but yeah. they don't have that same edge like they do in basketball and football. So yeah. obviously our guys can compete. So do yeah. you think or do you know happen to know the uh, what the bracket is looking after D six by chance? Uh, the single A, uh, the runner up of the district would be, end up playing uh, the Whippy Old champion, and from what I can gather, that would be Nishanok. Uh huh. Uh, they're always a strong program. They're actually led by a kid that's going to Florida State. Are they? Uh, I, I, John Sansone, I believe. So, you know, they're always a good program. Yeah. And uh, the District 6 champion would also play the Whippeal runner-up. Okay. And they're on opposite ends of the bracket. So if push came to shove, you could have a all-District 6 final. That'd be awesome. That would be really cool. And uh, for our District 5 viewers, they would actually be in the eastern end of the bracket. So... You know, maybe a Northern Bedford Bishop McCourt state yeah. champion, a bleacher coach is special. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, it was a shame that we couldn't get up there for that regular season that we wanted to. But, you know, we, we first of all, we have to cover the games that make sense to us as a business, you know. But, and then secondly, to we want to get out into the area more, more and more. But if a game like that, especially when they were playing like a lesser opponent. So if it's not going to be like a huge game, you know, that was obviously tough for us to get out to. But... What do you think uh, as far as getting out there for like a playoff game or something in District 5? I, I think it'd be pretty cool. Uh, you know, you got some good teams down in District 5. I, I'm not sure. I think uh, Connemont Township would be out that mm-hmm. way. So, you know, a matchup like that, you're gonna, it's going to be probably in Somerset, Bedford County, yeah, yeah. something we could cover. Yeah, that'd be cool. So I'd, I'd like to see them play. I know congrats to the Northern Bedford guys. They just won the ICC championship last night, I saw. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, congrats. They're having a great year. So it'd, it'd be fun to see. Uh, some local flavor in the state playoffs, mm-hmm. you know, at the single A level. Uh, you know, double A, they're they're also gonna have a similar ride to states. Uh, our district champion would actually end up playing the third seed out of the Whippeal. Okay. And uh, and our district district six triple A champion would actually play a Harrisburg team, the third seed out of district three. And that you're talking double A here still? No, that that would be triple A. Oh, that so the, the Somerset. Yeah, yeah. Holidaysburg, Forest Hills yeah, yeah. would end up playing a team from Harrisburg out that way. Okay. And the district champion would end up playing the, a Whippeal team in Quad A. So, you know, you, at that point, it's a 16 team tournament. You're going to have to beat someone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, it, it's, it's good baseball. It's, you know, high school baseball. It's free. They can't charge admission. So, it, you know, you That's get awesome. out, see a few games. You're going to see some good, good talent. Yeah. I was wondering that also with the track when we were. We covered the District 6, uh, I guess it would be AA track and field championships on Tuesday. And, uh, yeah, I was surprised that that was also free, like a district championship event. And is that the same thing kind of you can't charge admission to or something? Or? Well, the thing with baseball is, uh, you know, you got a lot of these high school fields yeah. where you just walk up to the gate. There's no gate. You yeah, just, yeah. You're there. You know? Yeah, sure, sure, So sure. even, like, 
I know, like, the teams that play in the stadium, like Guilfoyle and McCourt, yeah. they can't charge admission either because other teams can't. Because so. they can't, yeah, exactly. So free baseball for the next few weeks. You should check it out. The only the only times they'll charge will be uh, the championship rounds. So make sure you go out to the Curve Stadium. And uh, the state championships are actually at Penn State. So a uh, nice. lot to look forward to in the month of June. Nice. And make sure you're voting for Digger on Dancing with the Stars here <laughs> coming up. But he's going to need all the support he can get. I've seen that guy wiggle. Good luck, Coach. What do you want to talk about next, Dan? Well, why don't we go with the old controversial mm. PA football overall and the decline? So this, this is new to me. This is, well, news. Um, uh -huh. I, I actually had it just explained to me before our broadcast tonight that PA football is down in the dumps. It's the metaphorical equivalent of North Dakota football right now. Uh, what, what's going on? <laughs> What what's what's happening? Uh, what what can we point to 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 say we know that it's declining? And why do we think that is? Jim, you want to start with that? Uh, well, I wouldn't quite call it North Dakota, but it is not what it used to be. Uh, obviously, uh, Pennsylvania has a great football history. You know, the countless players uh, that have gone on to great success in the NFL and all that. But you look, you know, I believe Dan was saying that. The Whippeal produced less Division One players last year than ever. You know, you can't go into Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, and just walk away at twenty recruits and win mm -hmm. win a championship. It it doesn't happen that way yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you could totally see that now with Pitt and Penn State, like their recruits. You know, they're still pulling in solid recruits. You know, but uh, so they've always been a, a pipeline for Pennsylvania kids, Pitt and Penn State. Absolutely, it, it's yeah. a bit of a chicken and egg problem. Are they? Suffering because the athletes that they're getting aren't as good, or are they not getting athletes? Uh, you know, because, because of their the programs, programs aren't that good. Like, well, for example, Terrell Pryor uh, had the decision to go to Penn State or Ohio State, chose yeah. Ohio State. Uh, you know, which, which way do you yeah. think that equation works? You know, I think you could really look at that in a number of different ways. Obviously, the state of uh, of Penn State's program after the Sandusky and then Pitt's uh, coaching turnovers here within the past few years. That obviously adds to the instability, you know, around the area. But then, when you know, you flip that over, though. But then you look at at the relative stability. I wish you had that on camera. You look at the relative stability of of a program like Ohio State, for instance. And uh, you know, really, they're kind of like the. Uh, this isn't even like a real a real expression, but they're kind of like the golden egg in the basket. Ohio Ooh, State. that's beautiful. I, like, I know. Yeah, I Jim, write that down real yeah, quick. This is part of your unpaid internship. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I'm going to put that as like a picture. I'm just gonna, speaking I'm of sure. Ohio State, I, I mean, this is something that's been on my mind for a little bit. I, I really don't know. Yeah. Uh, a lot of you guys might not know either. Our founder and uh, host and visionary and fearless leader, Dan Francis, actually had a job opportunity to go help with the coaching staff at Ohio State. Um, what's going on with that? What what are you uh what are you doing there? Uh well I moved back from uh from Phoenix after I heard back from Ohio State I was coaching high school football out there. And I heard back from Ohio State originally, this is in about February, that said, Okay, you have a, a recruiting assistant job. Basically, you know, stuffing envelopes, taking recruits around, filling up water bottles I guess here and there. But, uh, you know, it's a big-time program, and, you know, they were just going through their coaching change and stuff, so... They got things, the old legend, Urban Meyer, in there now. Yeah, you know, exciting. he came in. Yeah, I mean, things are looking great for that program. But, you know, some things just don't work out. Uh, you know, we'll see here in the future, but... So you've decided to focus your energies on the D6 sports that work for now? Yeah, so, wait, what were we talking about? No, about... <laughs> yeah, we're talking... Yeah, just pencil... We'll stay on topic here. Yeah, guys. So to stay on topic here with the, the whole... Uh, Pennsylvania football and all that and uh, of course right now the, the three main players for Pennsylvania athletes have and will likely be for the future would be Pitt, Penn State, and Ohio State. And of course uh, Urban Meyer comes to town, big time coach. Who, who, you know, at this point, who would you want to play for? Urban Meyer, Bill O'Brien, or Paul Christ? Or Joe Paterno. Oh, yeah. Shocks. Shocks. <laughs> <laughs> but as of right now, Urban Meyer, he came in with under a month and landed Pennsylvania's top recruit last year. Yeah. And he's obviously trying to do the same this year. So, you know, there, there's some good players. You mm -hmm. know, I don't want to say Pennsylvania football's dead because yeah. they're still top-notch players. We're only a few years removed from Trell Pryor well, true, yeah. being the number one recruit in the country. You have guys like 
you know, Russell Shell. So, just so is it, if I'm hearing you, is it just the natural fluctuations of, you know, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't? Or is... Or is there something unique and different going on in these other states yeah, there that's is. not going on in Pennsylvania? What yeah. is that? I, I will first point to, like, they're having spring football now, even up north. Spring football is huge. Um, teams are coming out with indoor facilities now. It's really like a kind of a, a community uh, in, involvement in, in the athletic program, which is really huge. You really have to uh, – foster a sort of like a competitive nature and a, a competitive atmosphere around your program. And I think though, like, you know, Pittsburgh is so kind of steeped in that tradition, the Pittsburgh area in Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Pennsylvania as well, and that football tradition of competitiveness. But you know, it's hard if you're, if you're not trying to go out there and don't get me wrong. Some of these big schools, these quad A schools are going around and scheduling teams from Florida, from Ohio and stuff. But if you're not having like a, a really large uh, majority of your teams in your state trying to go out there and play the best competition, then you're never really going to uh, find that success that uh, Florida, California, Ohio, Texas are finding. Right. And so you would say that uh, a lot of it is playing better competition, mm -hmm. even more of it is mm -hmm. playing football in the spring. Yeah, it's, you need to play. It's about as simple as that. Yeah, there used I've, to be this kind of... Uh, blue collar, coal miner, tough guy mentality that, you know, while it wasn't spring ball, these boys were busting their butts all year, uh, you know, and the yeah. mines are doing whatever. Do you, that's something that we've lost over these last couple of years. Yeah. You can tell just going down a list of rivals right. 100 looking for the Pennsylvania kids or where the hell did they go? Yeah. Well, you know, obviously, like Pennsylvania, we still have that sort of heritage of the, you know, blue collar and steel mill, you know, coal mine thing, but... You know, when you look at it, a lot, nobody really works in the coal mines or works in the steel mills anymore. So I don't think I we really have. Mines. I would. Yeah. I do. Uh, what do you do? I mine, mine coal. coal. <laughs> what don't you understand? I mean, how does that work out for you? Well, my back hurts. My fingers are broke. My you haven't got stuck yet? No close calls? I don't really, I don't really uh, you know, talk in great English, but I get a lot of girls from it. So that's a positive. <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. Well, we actually have a female guest with us here today. So, Jocelyn, is... do you want to say hi? <laughs> Please hi. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> well, well, we wanted to uh, talk about relationships real quick. And do okay. you feel that um, coal miners are is an attractive bunch of, of men? Well, I'm from a fourth generation coal mining family. And actually, there are still coal mines running. About 70% of the energy used in Pennsylvania yeah. is Who's coal powered. That? That's really interesting, there. Jossie. So let me let me pose uh, <laughs> this hypothetical on you. Okay. So say you should be a lot of editing. Say my friend Scott <laughs> Lewis. So Joss, let me pose. That's really interesting, Jossie. <laughs> <laughs> let me pose this hypothetical on you. Okay. So, so my friend Scott Lewis, um, he was supposed to join us tonight for our second annual podcast. Uh, but he decided to go up to Erie to get some closure with his ex-girlfriend. Could you explain to me what closure <laughs> means exactly? Because he, you know, he was supposed to be back yesterday and he's still up getting closure. I'm just confused as to what that means. Well, you know, I think that the, uh, the end of every good relationship, you know, well, bad relationship, because it's ending, you need that face-to-face -face closure. And um, sometimes when push comes to shove, other things have to happen, you know, for that door to close. Right, right. Like, <laughs> what? I can't explicitly state this for the... Was this on YouTube? <laughs> it's on the World Wide Web. Yeah, so this is on the internet, internet. Josh. The knowledge is out there. People want to know. <laughs> you tell people I'm sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> what kind of closure I'm, Scott is getting up I'm there. getting a text from my PR publicist right now saying to refrain from... You said enough. All right. I'm going into uh, the nitty gritty detail, but all right, sports fans, we're not here to talk to you about relationships. We all know that. Um, so let, let's uh, hop into our next topic. Uh, talk about what can we do to improve the Johnstown sports scene. Um, basically, we need better teams if we're going to get, uh, you know, some national recognition uh, as far as recruiting rankings. We just need to win more games. You know, playing better competition is part of that, but you know, don't put the Bishop McCord Crushers up against the Saint, the team from St. Ed's, Ohio, and expect yeah. it not to be nine to nothing. Yeah. So, how do we get better teams? Um, 
you know, an, an idea that's being tossed around, not necessarily for the sake of making better teams, but for the sake of saving money uh, on a local level, is consolidation of the Johnstown schools. Uh, so this is a you know hot button issue. Some people hate it. Uh, some people hate it more. Uh, is there any support for it? It seems like the logical thing to do. Uh, you know, why can't we? Why does it exist in the first place? Uh, what can we do about it? And is it ever going to happen? Um, to talk on that point is it's hard to say like if it will ever happen, but you'd you'd, you'd like to look into it. You know, it has to be studied, has to be explored. Obviously, you know the the makeup of Johnstown is you know we have a small town with six high schools right in the town. You know, you go to Altoona, it's Altoona High School. You know, they have that. And right. It's a big school. And, and there's those... a strong sense of community within right. each, and kind of culture within mm -hmm. each different one of those. And it's uh, always been like that, yeah. Like, you know, they're weird in Richland, they're super weird in Forest Hills. They're, right. <laughs> they're extra weird in Westmont and yeah. you know, Ferndale. And <laughs> don't even get me started on Ferndale. <laughs> <laughs> No, but yeah, yeah, different degrees of weirdness yeah. throughout the town. People like to hang on to their roots. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess some people like to hang on to their jobs. Uh, I think that's a big part of consolidation yeah. that people... Oh. Yeah, you know. obviously that's a big issue with consolidation is, you know, job security, sense of entitlement, sense of power. You know, I'm the superintendent of Ferndale. Not, not, not to single out Ferndale because, you know... There's good people involved with everything, but absolutely, yeah. But it, it, it is important for everyone, not only Ferndale, to once in a while step back, look at the stars, and question their existence. It, you know, well, honestly, you know, in all in all honesty, though, you know, when you when you say that, who does that serve down the road? Does that serve the students that are still going to these smaller schools? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it depends which lens you look at it through. I mean, the same, it's the same thing. You know, you can view it through one lens; it's cutting the cost. Uh, the other lens is cutting the job, so, I mean, everyone wants to talk about, you know, my old man's a politician, everyone wants to talk about making the work, you know, Johnstown a better place for their kids to, to be in uh, going forward, but, yeah, fact of the matter is, does anyone really give a shit about their kids at all? Uh, if, if you're doing what's best for your kids, you know, you, you, you give up your job, you consolidate the schools, you get as best education as I possible, agree and I agree let's get that. some competition going, you know, throughout the schools. I mean, uh, sports. Yeah, imagine if there was like a hypothetical, like, uh, you know, two high schools in Johnstown type of deal. Like, I, that would really just kind of be like really stimulating. First of all, for the area. Second of all, for the for the actual students. So I think if one high school would be called Johnstown High School, the other high school could be called Shaquille O'Neal High School. <laughs> Where's the thought process of that? The thought process there is there's, there's this town, I forget what they're, northeastern Pennsylvania up by the Poconos. Uh -huh. uh, it used to be, you know, Humbuck, Pennsylvania. They renamed their town Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania uh, to, yeah, to grow yeah. their tourism industry. Jim Thorpe oh, had never that? been to that town in his entire <laughs> life. You could just do that now. It's crazy. <laughs> Altoona was actually renamed um, Palm... Uh, wow presents the greatest oh, town yeah. on earth for a yeah, while for yeah. some What's small amount like of cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, that's, we we'll won't do. get into Shakespeare, but well, what, 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 what made you, you pick Shaq? Is I am a huge fan of Shaq, especially his last commercial. I think it was a Cadillac commercial. Well, you know, he's one of the most esteemed academic slash athletic uh, figures of our time. Oh yeah, went to LSU. He's and like, he's it, one badass police officer. And he's just <laughs> goddamn hilarious. Yeah, I would definitely <laughs> pick him. Yeah, Shazam. Yeah. Oh, anybody see she 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 what are we going to do to kind of attract that sort of like mindset, a competitive mindset, like a we're here to stay type mindset? And I think something to add on to that will be just go to freaking quad A. You know, if we consolidate, we'll go to quad A. In my opinion, like I'm a, I'm a big football guy. And I love like big time, like high school and college football. And, and really, I view the quad A level as more of like a status. And I'll explain further by... Talking about back in the, the late 70s and 80s, whenever Johnstown and the Altoona rivalry was still really big, 
Uh, Jerry Davich was on there. He, he was actually a coach, I think, in the 80s. And he, he was amazing like as far as bringing back Johnstown and stuff. But there was a few quotes in the Altoona Mirror talking about will this rivalry continue. And he talked about, uh, numerous times, and this might not even have been his opinion. Who, who knows really like where this is coming from. But he was like, we simply just cannot compete anymore against an Altoona or whatever. But, you know, that same year, the next year, they beat Altoona. It's like kind of why... Why is Johnstown, and I'm not singling out Johnstown, I guess maybe I am because they're the only quad A around, or the only triple A around, but why are they selling themselves short? Or at least in my opinion, they're selling them, the, themselves short. Like, where does that stem from? Is that a Johnstown attitude? Again, I speak of, of Johnstown as a whole, not of just the high school. Well, just like overall, you know, Johnstown and Altoona, they're, they're like almost sister cities. They're like the two main cities, you know, in between Harrisburg and Johnstown. Right. If you put yeah. a hyphen between, between them, they're a diocese. It, right. That's yeah. how that works. So, you know, they're always <laughs> compared and contrasted against each other. You know, Altoona, you know, they have different sets. You know, they have their, you know, they more business. You know, uh, Johnstown's kind of always lived in the past a little uh, bit, you know. Uh, no. <laughs> really? <laughs> But, in 1958, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we actually have the 1958 uh, entire season at Johnstown High School on our site, d6sportsnetwork.com. <laughs> yeah, we're coming loud and proud from 1958, I'll tell you. But actually, uh, yeah, it's the D6, numeral 6, not the word 6. So check that out, .com. But uh, to stay on topic here, you know, we've already <laughs> talked about, like, the overall the schools and the, the makeup of everything. But, like, from a competitive edge, like, athletically, because we are a sports network, so we have to touch on that, is, you know, Johnstown, they're a good team. You know, Westmall always a good team. Rection always has a good team. But think how good all the schools' programs could be if they're all one or they're two, just two big schools, you know? Oh, my God. Yeah, and, I, you know, I, I always thought the solution was, yeah, send all the kids to McCourt, let them compete, we'll find the, you know, the best kids, and they'll make themselves better by competing, you know, we'll kick ass on the state level. Another solution, you know, like we're getting at, could be, you know, let's get Westmont, Ferndale, Johnstown, Connemont Valley, and, you know, throw them all in one basket. Well, I think you have to look to, like, a state like Maryland. Like, I, I was looking before, because uh, a team came up from uh, Maryland last year, and they played Ligonier, because they don't have a... Who was that, Fort Hill or something? Camp Hill? Fort, Fort Hill, I believe. It's Fort Hill it's and Allegheny and uh, Cumberland. They're the two big schools down there. Yeah. But uh, you look at them, they were one of the smallest schools in the state, yet they are comparable in size to Johnstown High. The, the thought of a single-A school and even a double-A school in Maryland is unheard of because they go by counties. So, like, in essence, if you thought about it, there should really only be three schools in Cambria County. We shouldn't have 12 little single-A and double-A schools. You know, it, it, I don't know what purpose we're serving by having and Bishop McCourt, and Bishop McCourt, and Bishop Carroll, right? And but and Bishop McCourt, and Bishop McCourt, and uh, but just the whole the whole single A mindset. You know what what are we really gaining by, you know, having having like little schools like that? You know, yeah. the education obviously isn't the same as, you know, the bigger schools. You know, everything it absolutely is, and it's terrible. So it, it's just it's hard to it's hard to imagine why we're keeping it but you know pennsylvania not just johnstown pennsylvania the state overall yeah, it's pennsylvania a very... has the most local government entities of, yeah. of any state in the union i mean it's it's very crazy in that regard in a lot of ways yeah. and it, just, it just goes yeah. goes hand in hand with having that many school districts and so i mean just a little history i, I don't want to get off topic uh so <laughs> you don't have to say you know to stay on topic but the, the reason that we did this is because in the the i don't even want to the railroad era uh, there, there was, there was, I think like 200 and something state representatives and senators, uh, and that was kind of easy for the railroads uh, to buy 200 people off. They could afford to buy 200 people off. So their solution was, well, if we doubled the amount of people that were, you know, sitting and making laws, it would be twice as hard for them to buy everybody off. So they did that, like up the number to, you know, 400 some. Uh, state legislators. So, so that, that was their way to combat the railroads and the effect of you know, money. I think the railroads are gone now. Yeah. I, I, I'm in total agreement with you guys that there's no need for Ferndale's Chicken uh, Park School District to exist. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not even connected. And, yeah, and, and five, it really five areas not no, even in the and same. That's not. That's honestly not like a hate on or a bash on Ferndale. Like, like they're. Why, why, why is that a school district? How does that make any fiscal sense whatsoever? Mm. Brad, I'm asking you. Well, it doesn't, Dan. <laughs> and, uh, that, that's a simple answer there. Yeah. So, 
but but I think we've touched on something uh, that's important, and it, it's a sense of uh, a strong sense of local communities uh, within the Johnstown area. I mean, even within Forest Hills. I mean, I, I spend a lot of time in South Fork, and when you go to South Fork, people are not from Forest Hills; they're from South Fork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, South Fork has maybe 200 people in the whole damn place, but they're all from South Fork. Yeah, yeah. Same with, you know, Prospect. Um, yeah. So there's a strong sense of community. I think that it's the same sense of, you know, we're not all from Johnstown, mm -hmm. we're from South Fork or mm -hmm. Prospect mm -hmm. or Moxham. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's that that doesn't allow for a professional sports team in Johnstown to succeed. Uh, so, I mean, we've tried hockey, we've tried baseball, we've tried football four times. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of it is from, you know, this, the professional sports teams in Pittsburgh kind of cannibalize the professional sports teams in Johnstown. Yeah, sure. But, you know, you look at UPJ, they've never really had, you know, a Johnstown support. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. kind of similar to the idea of having a team like the Pennsylvania Pirates or mm -hmm. the Pennsylvania Flyers. Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine how crazy that right, would be? Right, There's right. no, like, you know, sense of Pennsylvania. It's, right. In Pennsylvania, you're either Pittsburgh, you're Philadelphia. Uh, uh, in Johnstown, you're, you know, one of the 127 communities that, that exist in, mm -hmm. you know, these imaginary lines in people's head. But yeah, it's really hurt local sports. And, you know, I know that's not the only reason that things haven't gone, uh, you know, as we'd like to see them go in Johnstown. Mm -hmm. But, you know, personally, I don't go to the games. I know we've covered them. Right. Um, uh, Dan, you've, you've covered a couple games and done a great job, and it's really cool what's going on down there. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there's there, I, I think the reason is that there's not, you know, Johnstown kind of like conglomera conglomeration or something, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, uh, go ahead, you want to go? Yeah, to, t to touch on the whole, like, uh, professional sports in Johnstown, which obviously has not worked out. You've had the Chiefs that, that were around forever, then, then you had the Wheeling Nailers project that just tried to like force a few games on you and you know now we have the new junior hockey team coming to town uh -huh, and uh -huh. it's it's hard to imagine it you know I, I'd like it to work right, I'd love it to right. work but how is it gonna work you know these, these guys uh -huh. aren't professionals they're not the penguins oh obviously, I'd, yeah. you know the people of Johnson they'd rather go sit at the bar and watch the penguins than go Clearly. watch a bunch of juniors play a bunch of no but uh, Jim really I've been thinking about this actually I started thinking about this because Let's put it this way. When I was a uh, sophomore or junior in high school, whenever that first indoor team came, I thought it was really cool just because, oh, there'd be football in the springtime or whatever. And But, you know, like the first couple games were all right. And then, you know, obviously the fan support tapered off and, you know, everything that went with that. We saw – we see what's going on right now with the generals. I mean, that's, that's, that's quite frankly embarrassing. And I know some of, like, the guys that were in charge of – like general managers and stuff, and they're not even at a fault for that at all. Like, yeah, what are they gonna do? They don't have any money to they, pay they, their guys. No, it wasn't even do? from. It wasn't even the GMs. It was. It's the owner who he owned two teams. I don't know what the heck that's all about. That was really weird. But what I think it all comes down to, and I'll and I'll give examples of these other of the other sports that have been in the area and why they have failed as well. But it goes back to exactly what Brad was touching on, which is. There's not that community support. There's not that, you know, feeling of, oh, we're Johnstown and not, oh, we're Lorraine Borough. Um, Those Lorraine Borough boys go hard, too, don't they? Yeah, they don't, do. Don't ever meet a Lorraine Borough boy in the back alleys at yeah. night. Get the fist. That's the last out. thing you want to do, run. <laughs> no, but really, you know, so think about it then. That, if you think, okay, that's the reason then what is the solution? And this is touching more on our urban redevelopment side, which we want to get into eventually. And that is making it like a good place to go out to, like for a night, making that like, oh, this is a night out on the town, you know, how they say. Right. So like think or of whatever, you know. Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> whatever they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, like just think, for example, we're up here in Westmont and um, a great place, uh, you know how Andy Lasky used to own the Westmont Theater. And they, uh, their movies came out, I think, like, like six weeks later than, than the regular theaters would get it. But they would get, they would have, like, cool deals. They would have, like, gourmet food or, you know, it would be, like, really personable. And, like, I can say from experience that, like, oh, I was like, oh, I'm not going up to Richland, even if this the same movie is playing both places. Like, going to go here because you kind of feel that, like, 
wanted, you're wanted there, or this is unique or something. And I think that they, that's what these like teams really need is like sort of that Johnstown vibe, but also like not just like rah rah, we're from Johnstown. Make it be fun. Make it make there be like local bands there. You know, they had that they had the party pit down there for the generals uh, this year. Which was, you know, for, for everybody 21 and over to go and drink and stuff. But the beers were extremely overpriced. And uh, don't you hate that? Yeah, stadiums, you're not going to get a lot of good shit there. Stuff. Mm, and, uh, you know, but, like, so what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, they were trying to do those kind of, like, promo events and making it fun. But if you're not connecting with Johnstown at the same time, then it's never going to work. Well, my thought on the whole thing is, like, you know... You have the Altoona Curve, and they do very well. They're always one of the top franchises in the minor leagues. And I think the one yeah. thing one thing you can really point to with Altoona Curve is that they're affiliated with the Pittsburgh Pirates. They have the guys that are going to be playing on the Pirates in yeah, two or three huge. years. That is big. You know, so you, you had the Johnnies. They were an unaffiliated team. You had the Chiefs. You know, they were the Tampa Bay Lightning's, uh -huh. like, double-A uh -huh. affiliate yeah. equivalent. So, you know, it would be wise for a team like Johnstown to, have, to bring in a minor league team to be connected with Pittsburgh, right, you know, have right. that sense of like, okay, these are the guys that we'll be seeing, we'll buy their jerseys, you know, we mm -hmm. can be proud of them when they get there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, and the whole thing, you know, the facilities of Johnstown aren't that bad, but, you know, the way the Point Stadium turned out with the field turf, there's no minor league team that plays on field turf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's no way they're right. ever going to be able to bring in an yeah, affiliated sure. team. So, you know, they kind of tied their hands on that one. But you, know, you look at the War Memorial with the history, Slapshot, the... I mean, you know, it's a great facility. Everything yeah. with it. It's a nice, It's a really good minor league hockey arena. Absolutely, yeah. But, you know, for one reason or another, overpriced, whatever, but it just never caught on. And, you know, it always can be attributed to, you know, people will support their high school team well, for yeah. their, you know, they're loyal to what they have. Yeah. I mean, seriously, when you think about, if you think about that, like, what is going to get you out? No matter if they're affiliated with... I, 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 if they were affiliated with, like, um, the L.A. Kings, actually, I would definitely go to that then because I love the L.A. Kings right now. But if they, were, if they were affiliated with, like, I don't know who's terrible, the Columbus Blue Jackets, another hate Ohio, um, you know, I would go if it was, if it was fun. Like, yeah, it, it's just, like, the whole, like, you know, we're so – Johnstown is so close to Pittsburgh that – we identify ourselves as Steeler and Penguin and Pirate fans, you know, yes, so we do. so it's it's hard to imagine that we can just, as a whole community, just latch on to a Johnstown team. Right, you yeah. can only root for so many sports teams. That's yeah. the reason why sports were not been in the first Absolutely. place, to keep the middle class down. Right. Yeah. Keep them occupied. Yeah. But occupy it, Johnstown. Hashtag. The movement. Uh, <laughs> so right now we're being joined in the studio by Zach Freeman. Uh, Zach's a... Bishop Court basketball legend and coach of the Clippers uh, down in the City Baseball League. Uh, Zach's actually the founder of what's called a wiffle ball bonanza. Uh, so, Zach, I'd love to hear more about the bonanza. I've talked to a lot of people that I've only heard great things. Uh, you know, people are stoked about it in the Johnstown community and, in, you know, in the Ligonier, I guess. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the wiffle ball bonanza? Uh, yes, I can, Brad. Um... First of all, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, as of late, the Wiffleball Bonanza's popularity has grown extensively. Um, we do have our roots in Ligonier, Pennsylvania, and we are proud of them, that's for sure. Uh, it started in 2008 with uh, the original 11 members, and I made the 12th. Uh, I was the 12th member, so we had four teams with three guys each. Uh, so so we're, we're, we're talking ghosties here. There is some, there, in that year, there were some ghosty runners. Um, <laughs> you know, wiffle ball definitely held true that year with all its traditions. But the idea just originally, uh, Pitcher's Mound Poison has been uh, recently adapt, uh, adapted to the rules in the last two years. Right, and you can, you can actually check uh, the website, wiffleballbonanza.com, for all the rules and regulations. But uh, yeah, uh, let's talk about the history. The history, uh, simply, uh, I have to give a little bit of credit to the Westmont area for its history. I went to Barn Ball, um, two-on-two -two basketball tournament. You're and, familiar. Uh, I believe some of you <laughs> hilltoppers are familiar with uh, Barn Ball. Uh, I thought the tournament was great. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, I thought uh, 
just the way the tournament presented itself was perfect. The, the band, the food, the, the band, the, the food, all the brackets hung up on the wall. People sitting in the barn. Great, great environment, and I really appreciated it. The sweat, the competitive spirit, the old, elbows, the old, sense of yeah. importance in calling that if I win this game, you know, <laughs> things are about yeah. to start going on the up and up for me. That's so right. I love barn ball, too. Yep, right? yep, old men, young men, like, it's, it was great. I really, I really liked what the tournament uh, brought to the table. So when I returned to my hometown of Ligonier, Pennsylvania, uh, a few weeks after, I just looked around and I said, I need to start something like it. I need to start my own barn ball. But, you know, I didn't want to be a copycat, Brad. So <laughs> I said, what's, what's the next best thing? What, is it wall ball? It's, it's not. It was it's not. not. You wall thought ball. longer and harder. I thought a little bit longer <laughs> and I thought, you know, uh, you know, can jam wasn't around yet, so it certainly wasn't that. And, and you know, how competitive can you really get with cornhole? Well, you know, that's a whole different I'm talking about tournament style play though, you know. It's just, it's too long of a game. Right, right? it's a bit so tedious. It's too long of a game. So I I went back to the roots. I went I went straight to the plastic bat and plastic ball. I went wiffle ball. You kept a gangster. Kept it like that, Brad, you know. So uh, I my neighbor, Gary Stiles, uh, he has a, a business in, in uh, New Florence, a uh, grocery mart, if anybody's interested. Weird town. Uh, yeah. But anyway, he has a empty lot next to his house, and for my entire childhood, no one ever used this. Uh, it's just this vacant lot, no one played in it. Gary just mows it weekly. That's all it's been known for. <laughs> and <laughs> when I looked over there, I, I honestly had like a Kevin Costner Field of Dreams vision. Like, uh, That's incredible. Ray Liotta like spoke to me, if you build it, they will come. I really, I saw this field. I saw exactly how I wanted to play out. And uh, a couple of days later, I just said to my dad, I said, we need to host a wiffle ball tournament. We need to you know, we need to get on this. And he said, okay, well, what do you need? So we, we got old construction fence from uh, Ligonier Borough, and uh, we only had about 50 feet of it, so that kind of sucked. So from center field to right center was whatever you could think of. There were lawn chairs, there were hay bales. Uh, there was like a, there was a chalk easel, third grade chalk easel. And, and one that uh, still stands, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is in, was in the original, but... Uh, right field is now uh, a camper. Yeah, uh, not in the original plans. Was yeah, not awesome, was man. not there originally. It uh, was adapted into the second year. Uh, great addition to the field. It's a it's a coachman camper. It's about twelve feet high. Eighteen. It's a real white monster. Oh my! It's in right field. It certainly stands as uh, not unlike my friend Jim Hammond. That's right, <laughs> Jimbo. Wait, so if it hits the camper, is it in play? Or? Off yeah, the wall. The ruling is. Man. Uh, and I don't know why for those why you, so for those of you that plan on coming to the Bonanza in in the future, um, you have to hit the top of or clear the camper for it to be a home run. If you hit the camper, it is it's like hitting it off the wall. Keep running, you know. You're, that's Do all people it is. People say that they're like big shots, like oh, that hit the camper. I've had people walk. drill the camper and say like that's a home run. Oh, what? that's such crap. Uh, yeah. Well, why did you ask the question then? And, yeah, you brought it up. Read <laughs> the you rules. Were purposes. Read the rules. <laughs> so, we have some. And we would like to add that uh, the D6 Sports Network proud sponsor of the Wiffle Ball Bonanza. But, Very uh, proud sponsor. Absolutely. We'll bring. They'll be bringing it to you live this year. Uh, anyway, and that was in 2008. Can you stream it. What's that? Do you, oh, we could you stream it. That's our practice run. <laughs> Where are you streaming it? Do the live coverage. Live coverage. <laughs> watch the wiffle ball with there. Oh, no, no, more than you expect, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the whole town of Liggy. They gotta get their ass out the Liggy here. <laughs> anyway, so that was 2008. We had, uh, it was 12 people in the tournament. Um, we did not cross, uh, you know, the sexual barriers or the race barriers yet. We were just... <laughs> We were young. We were a young enterprise. As was the first year. First year. First year. So the next year, uh, and, and the champion was, was handed a rickety old bowling trophy uh, that has been retired since then. And uh, that was the champion's trophy. So talk to me about today. What, what, today. Are, what are we looking at at the Wiffle Ball Bonanza Brad, today? listen, we have made leaps and bounds in the last. This will be the fifth year. This will be the fifth annual Wiffle Ball Bonanza. And uh, to find out, 
all the information, please visit our website, wiffleballbonanza.com. And uh, basically what we've done in five years is we've, uh, we, we've more than doubled the participation. We're, we're, last year we had 67 players. We had 10 teams. Uh, wow. 10 teams. The, there's a minimum of five players on each team, a maximum of eight. Uh, the way it's set up is you show up, you drop your name in a bucket, and you try to get on a team. And you have to build instant camaraderie and try to win a championship. So, just like that. Just like that. That's what the Wiffle Ball Bonanza is all about. So, Zach, um, is there like a, like a meaning behind it? Is there like a fund yeah. for it? Like how, how does it all work? Where yeah. Uh, good question, Jim. Uh, last year was the, uh, was the first year that we tried to raise funds for a specific purpose, and that purpose was the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Uh, um, I set in seventh grade, 2003, I was diagnosed with type 1 juvenile diabetes. And uh, my parents and I have been proud advocates of supporting the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And uh, for, the, for, the three, for, for the first three years of the tournament, we really didn't try to do anything in terms of a purpose. We just wanted people to come, come and have fun and eat and enjoy themselves and simply just play wiffle ball. But... Um, Last year was the first year that we really had everything set in stones in terms of uh, the facility and how things operate, and we had a little bit more luxury in terms of how we were going to plan and make the event meaningful. So last year we were able to raise $700 for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. That's great. And uh, the, way, the way this is all possible, the entire event from beginning to end is from... Uh, few sponsors that we've had in the years, past years, uh, Mac M. Dar Plumbing Company in Ligonier, uh, State Representative Mike Hey, Mike this is Reeves. our podcast. We give the shout-outs to sponsors. Oh, okay. No, okay, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. But uh, there's been a, a few sponsors that have been very generous. Uh, the McGinley family from Pittsburgh, they always give a very generous donation for the naming rights of the field. Uh, the Wiffleball Bonanza is held at McGinley Park. Um, That's awesome. And we've had a we've had a few others throughout the years, and um, once again, if you visit our website, you can you can find out more information about sponsorships and things like that. But um, now, other than crowning a champion and finding out who the all tournament team is, and fantastic phalanges, the Jack Wilson Award, and and uh, <laughs> the Cy the Cy Young Award, just trying to find out who those people are. We really, my family and I, we really like to support JDRF and their cause to finding a cure for diabetes. Well, that's great, Zach. Thanks for being on the show. And Thank I, you. I think, Thanks, Zach. You know, that's really a perfect way to wrap things up today. Uh, so to all our fans, you know, good riddance. We'll, <laughs> we'll see you soon.